Good morning, everybody. I hope you all are having a nice, nice weekend, a great Saturday. I hope you all have a great day tomorrow going to church and uh, take your family with you guys. Y'all have a great time at, at y'all's church service and give honor and glory and worship and praise to God because he's worthy. He's done a lot for you this week. I mean, you're still here, right? You've gotten up every morning and, and God's just been God in, in your life and he's been good to you and your family. OK, so just uh, go to church tomorrow and, and enjoy this weekend. OK, let it be a great time in the Lord. And uh, yes. I believe God will bless you, okay? I'm going to read this morning in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, and uh, verses 1 through 6. So follow along with me, okay? And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, in, in other words, uh, the Christians, okay, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and, and suddenly... There shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay, so at, at this moment, guys, you know, being saved is not a hard thing to do. I know I've said this many, many times, but it's the truth. It's probably the simplest thing you can do, okay? Giving your life to the Lord because it doesn't take any effort, okay? It just takes your sincerity of heart to give your life to the Lord. And it just uh, it's just a life-changing experience. Let me tell you that right now. I've, I've served the Lord for these many, 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 many years, okay? And God's just been so good to me and, and to Esperanza también and to my family, okay? So it, it, it's, uh, you know, giving your life to the Lord, guys, it's not a waste of time. It's never a waste of time. And, and, and let me tell you guys, there's no one, there's no one that can take the place of Jesus, okay? Jesus is the only way you're going to get to heaven, okay? Jesus is the only way you're going to get to heaven. There is no other route. There is no other means. There's no religion. There's no doctrine. There's no uh, bylaws or, or constitutions or uh, conferences or or, or, or sacraments or you, you name it god there's no and you say how do you know well all you got to do is read your bible okay i say over and over read your bible guys please read your bible okay even the scripture that i gave you today which is uh acts 9 verses 1 through 6 read it and study it and, and learn from it I actually learn from the whole chapter it's, it's it's a continuing story okay i just cut it off short right here but listen uh paul was on his way paul was a was a very religious man and let me tell you guys we learn from this story right here that religion doesn't get you anywhere, okay? I don't care how righteous you think you are, okay? I don't I don't care how well you think you're serving God. If you don't have Christ, you don't have anything, guys. You can be uh, the best uh, moral individual that helps these people and those people, and, and you give to the church thousands of dollars, and, and you go you don't miss a single service during the week, and, and you do this and that and the other, guys. Let me tell you, unless it's through Jesus Christ and him crucified because of what he did at the cross, guys, that's the only way we're going to get to heaven. You know, Jesus, God said in his word, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't say because he gave his only religion that that, that, that was the Baptist or the Assemblies of God or Catholics or Methodist or whatever. He didn't say that. He didn't. You, I, you cannot insert that in there, guys, because it's not a religion. It's not a person. Uh, you know, a, a, a person like us that gave their lives, that gave their life on a cross for us. It's Jesus Christ, okay? It's Jesus Christ. And let me tell you guys, if, if, if you want to have victory in your life, why don't you accept Christ into your heart and let him turn your life around? You know, let, it, let him uh, do an about face with you, a completely turning away from sin, okay? And uh, am I saying that Christians are perfect? Not in the least slightest. But we have an advocate with God the Father every time. If we falter, we fail, we can run to Jesus. And he'll take care of us. He'll give us the victory that we need in our lives. Okay. So just remember that. Okay. Just remember that. And uh, so anyway, Paul was, I mean, you know, when he, he was on his way to Damascus, he, he'd gotten some letters from, from his bosses, let's say it in that manner. And uh, so he went and uh, he was, I mean, he was angry. Okay. He was, as, as the word of God says, and. He was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. 
We ask the question, can anybody save? Does God save everybody and anybody that wants to be saved? Yes, he does, no matter how bad they are. This was a bad man. Paul was a bad man, a religious bad man, a zealot for the things that he thought were right, okay? And he comes to find out after conversion that he, he'd been wrong all along, okay? I mean, he was there when they stoned Stephen, and he was... He, he approved of it, guys. He approved of it. That's, how, that's what kind of heart Paul had. But he always thought, well, I'm doing God a, doing God a, a service. I'm, I'm doing him a favor. No, he never was. He is just killing people, okay? Uh, he had the killing fever, okay? And so, uh, yeah, he was just taking men and women, left and right, and kids, and this, that, and the other. I, he didn't care whether they were, they were old or young, but he got them. He would bring them into jail, and he'd throw them into jail, and some he had killed, okay, or would bring them to get killed, okay. And uh, so this was going on and on, and finally one day on his way, way to Damascus, God showed up, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure God, when he was in heaven at one time or another, I don't know none of the particulars, but God had to say, that's enough for this man. I, I need to appear unto him and tell him to turn his life around because he is headed in the wrong direction and he's doing the wrong thing. And besides, I see in him something that I want to use, okay. And, and of course he did. He uh, on the way to Damascus, he said the, the the light God shone a light upon him, and 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 he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Okay, what are you doing? You know, coming after my people, after my after 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 uh, after my kingdom. Okay, and and Saul said, and Saul said, because he was trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Okay. I'll, I'll change. I mean, this guy was so scared because of what he'd seen that he said, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And he said, and the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But the, but the thing that I, that I like right here is uh, Paul says, what would you have me to do? Okay. So at that moment, at that time, I believe Saul gave his life to the Lord because he said he, he, he acknowledged God as Lord. He acknowledged Jesus as Lord. Okay. You don't acknowledge anybody as Lord if, you, if anybody does anybody that accepts Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're going to acknowledge Jesus as Lord. If Jesus, if you don't acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never acknowledge Him as Lord. But Paul did, so we know this conversion happened here. Okay. So anyway, uh, to make a long, uh, a wonderful short uh, story short, of course Paul went and he met with a man on Aeneas, and Aeneas prayed for him and. And because Paul was, was blind for a little while because of the great light, and Aeneas prayed for him, you know, he, Paul, Paul received a sight, or Saul, because he's Saul at the time, he's not Paul yet. And uh, so, uh, you know, Paul came to know the Lord. A thief, a, not a thief, but a killer, a murderer, a guy that was persecuting people, thinking he was doing a, a religious individual, let me put it that way, better to put it that way. A religious, religious, religion gets you nowhere, guys. Always remember that. Always remember that. And so God changed this man's life. Paul, mighty man of God, mighty man of God. As you know, he wrote the epistles. Okay. Then we have. Then we have. Then we can go on over to uh, another story that happened with Paul. Okay. In, in, in short, you know, Paul got in prison. Him and his friend uh, uh, Silas got in, put into prison. And of course, in the middle, of, they'd been beaten and, and, and all this that, and the other, and abused and all this that, and the other, as far as beatings were, were concerned. And uh, in the middle of the night, they were singing and. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, the doors were open in the, into the, uh, of the prison, okay? And the, the guard that was there was, was scared out of his wits. And he, has, he, 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 he was about to take his life because he said, that these, guys, these guys are going to get away and they're going to hold me responsible. They're going to kill me anyway, so I might as well take my life. And Paul said, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. And uh, when Paul started talk, talking to him, okay, uh, the question that the man asked, because he was afraid, he was afraid, and, and, and he didn't know what to do. The, the question that he asked, sir, what must I do to be saved? Again, the question is, what must I do to be saved? Okay, and the and Paul quickly said, and, he, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy, and thy house. Simple, guys. That's what I keep saying. Paul asked the question, what must I do? This man asked, what must I do? It's simple. The reply is simple. You accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you want to have victory in your life, if, if you want to be set from your bondages and, and sins in your life, all you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. Okay, Jesus, come into my heart. And, and, and Jesus will. Jesus will help you. He'll bless you. He'll, he'll lead you in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. And, and, and I tell you what, Jesus is, just, Jesus is just awesome, guys. So 
this morning before we sign off, I, I'd like to say the, 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 well, the sinner's prayer, okay? So just follow with me, okay? Just, just say these short words with me this morning and uh, just let God be God, okay? Let him come into your life, turn your life around completely this morning so that you can be a new creation in the Lord, okay? Uh, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner that knows that you can forgive me my sins, okay? I ask that you come into my heart today, that you change my life and you turn my life around. I ask Jesus that everything I have ever been, that you take it away. Your word tells me that you loved everybody, so you died for everybody. So that, that means me. So Jesus, please, I surrender my heart to you, so accept me this morning. Okay? And Lord, I will accept you as my Lord and Savior. If you said that simple little prayer, guys, congratulations are in order. You found the answer. You found the Lord. What must I do to be saved? Just confess the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, as a Savior of your soul and your life. Jesus is awesome, okay? Congratulations are in order. You found the answer. You found the Lord. There's a new name written down in heaven and glory. And the journey is just going to get sweeter and sweeter every day. My name is Peter Flores, okay? 301 West 15th Street is my mailing address. Herford, Texas, 79045 is city and uh, zip code. So, uh, yeah, drop us drop us a letter. Let's see what you have to say. Okay, and hopefully somebody gave their life to the Lord. And that's always my hope, guys, because that's, that's what this is all about. So all I can say right now is the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace. And the people of God this morning said, Amen. And amen. And God willing, we're going to see you, okay, next week. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.